The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Measurement of the BH characteristic of a magnetizable core provides the constitutive law that relates the magnetization density M, or equivalently the magnetic flux density B, to the macroscopic magnetic field intensity H within a material. The objective here is to observe the establishment of H by an imposed current in accordance with Ampere's law, and to deduce B from the voltage it induces in accordance with Faraday's law. A toroidal coil is tightly wound onto a donut-shaped magnetizable core. Each turn carries a current I. For the toroidal geometry, Ampere's integral law is enough to relate the current I to the H field in the magnetizable core material. Symmetry about the toroidal axis suggests that H is phi directed. Ampere's integral law is written for a contour C circulating about the toroidal axis within the core. Because the major radius R of the torus is large compared to the minor radius, the field is essentially uniform over the cross section of the torus. We approximate the average radius by the radius R. Thus, the line integral of H is essentially 2 pi r times H. To evaluate the right-hand side of Ampere's law, we see that the surface S, spanned by this contour C, is pierced by the current I as many times as there are turns N1. So the surface integral of J is N1I. Thus, Ampere's law reduces to the product of H phi in the contour circumference 2 pi r equaling N1i. Here is the excitation winding. The current is supplied by this variac. The voltage drop across this small resistance in series with the driving winding is used to record the driving current I. This voltage drives the horizontal amplifier of the oscilloscope. Because the H field is proportional to current, the horizontal scope deflection is therefore proportional to the magnetic field intensity H in the core material. The magnetic flux density is measured by means of a second sensing or secondary winding also wound on the donut-shaped core. This coil is terminated in a high enough impedance that it carries a negligible current. Thus, the H field established by the current I of the excitation winding is unchanged. The flux linked by each turn of the sensing coil is essentially the flux density B multiplied by the cross-sectional area of the core. The flux linked by the N2 turn coil is then N2 times the flux linked by each turn. An RC integrating network on this sensing or secondary coil integrates the terminal voltage so that the flux linking the coil is recorded. The circuit acts as an integrator because the capacitor has a reactance at the frequency of operation, 60 hertz, that is much smaller than the series resistance. With the capacitor essentially a short circuit, the current is approximately V2 over R2. From Faraday's law, the terminal voltage of the sensing coil is the time rate of change of the magnetic flux linking the coil. This current then charges the capacitor. By comparing these last two equations, we can see that the voltage across the capacitor is proportional to the magnetic flux linking the sensing coil. Thus, by connecting the terminals of the sensing coil through the integrator to the vertical trace of the oscilloscope, we make the vertical axis proportional to B. So, we should see a display of B versus H on the oscilloscope. Here is the experiment. The magnetizable material is in this donut-shaped toroid. The excitation or primary coil connected to these terminals is driven by the current at 60 hertz from this variac. The voltage across this series, one ohm resistance, 
then gives a horizontal deflection of the oscilloscope proportional to I and thus H. The terminals of the sensing coil are connected through the integrating network with resistance 100 k ohms and capacitance 1 microfarad to the vertical deflection terminals of the oscilloscope. Thus, the vertical deflection is proportional to the integral of the terminal voltage, the flux lambda, and hence to B. We turn up the variac current. The scope shows the BH hysteresis loop typical of a magnetically soft material. For our primary coil of 83 turns, the major radius is about 3.2 centimeters. The current viewing resistor on the primary coil is 1 ohm. Thus, the scope scaling factor relating H to V1 equal IR1 is 413. With a horizontal scope scale of a half a volt per centimeter, each scope horizontal deflection of one centimeter is about 210 amps per meter. The minor diameter of the secondary coil is 1.2 centimeters. There are 537 turns. The integrating circuit has resistance 100 k ohms and capacitance 1 microfarad. The scaling factor relating integrating capacitive voltage V sub C to magnetic flux density B is 1.65. With a vertical scale of a half a volt per centimeter, each vertical deflection of one centimeter is 0.83 teslas. Thus, for this core, saturation is reached at B approximately two teslas for an H field of about 500 amps per meter. Polycrystalline ferromagnetic material at the domain level has randomly oriented magnetic moments that tend to cancel in the absence of an applied field. As a magnetic field is applied, the domain walls shift those domains with magnetic dipole moments aligned with the applied field grow at the expense of domains having oppositely directed magnetic dipole moments. The result is a net magnetization that tends to be in the direction of H. In ideal materials at high magnetic fields, saturation results when all of the domains combine into one. In real materials used for transformers, imperfections and boundaries result in the domain walls encountering a resistance to motion. A phase lag then develops between the magnetization and the magnetic field intensity, H. The BH trajectory makes this evident. It shows that even when the applied field, H, is instantaneously zero, there remains a remnant flux density, B sub R. And the field must be reversed to minus H sub C, the coercive field intensity, to reduce the flux density to zero. Hysteresis can be both useful and harmful. Permanent magnetization at the remnants point is the basis for permanent magnets and for the storage of information on magnetic tapes and disks. However, periodic excitation of a hysteretic material, such as in a transformer or rotating machine, dissipates energy and generates heat. The area enclosed within the BH hysteresis loop is the energy per unit volume dissipated in one cycle. The dissipation arises from the resistance to propagation of the domain walls.